The Vancouver Canucks pulled off a big comeback win in overtime to topple the Detroit Red Wings in the Motor City with the Canucks' newest and brightest stars leading the way as they continue this dominant road trip just like they've done on the road all season. We're going to be breaking down all of that in this episode of Canucks Digest, but first make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss any updates surrounding the Canucks as they continue this road trip. With that, let's hop into the first topic of the day, which is Canucks win big in OT. So the Canucks gave us a bit of the Sunday scaries as they pulled off a comeback win in overtime after being down two goals to the Detroit Red Wings to pull off the overtime win. We're going to touch on the scores in a second, but just looking on the shots on goal, it was a more offensive game for Vancouver than we're used to seeing. They did only get six shots in the first period, but then the second period and the third period brought way more offense where they got 13 shots and then 10 shots. They did allow a lot of shots on net in the third period, but they were able to get the rally going and pull off the overtime victory. And looking at the overall game stats as well, shots on goal, again, pretty much dead even. Face off, dead even. Sucks that we don't have JT Miller because he is a great presence in the face off circle. But again, we're playing a bit better in the face off circle. It wasn't the greatest showing, but at least we were able to split the face off battle that way. Power play, two goals in the power play. That was awesome to see. We got the power play going a little bit more. Eight penalty minutes. We didn't take too many, but they didn't take much more than we did. Hits, we played a more physical game with 33 to 27 block shots they were able to get the uh, the bodies in front of the puck a little bit more they had a little bit they had one more giveaway than we did we got to limit those a little bit going forward but we did get one more takeaway than they did so overall it wasn't a super clean game by the Canucks but it wasn't a sloppy game by the Canucks by any means it was a little bit slow to get going but they did eventually get things going and got things clicking and one of those players that was able to get it clicking is that our second topic of the day which is is the shining stars. I know we all want to get into the scores, so let's show you the scores right there. There's not many others to show except for Jake DeBrusque, who just had himself a day. Eric Branstrom did have that one-timer snipe from Elias Pettersson off that feed from near the net where Petey could not corral it to get a shot off, but he was able to get it back to Branstrom, who was able to just snipe it home, and DeBrusque getting involved on the secondary assist with that as well. So DeBrusque was involved in every single goal, pretty much, except for Pew Suters, which we got to give him his flowers as well, getting that going near the end of the second period. But Eric Branstrom, he played a great game. He's continuing to show why he was a worthy investment. Again, we only we, we got him for nothing, basically. We got to get rid of Tucker Pullman, and he has been a great asset. But, of course, Jake DeBrus showing up and showing out, putting the team on his back, getting us the goals when we needed them, and then getting the overtime winner as the cherry on top of the hat trick. And you see talk at post game talking. This is why we got went out and got him. The what a night went a heck of a goal to end it talking about Jake DeBrusque post game and Jake DeBrusque talking about his hat trick in general. When you get to two goals that quickly with that much time left, you are definitely thinking about getting the third. It was great to get in overtime. He got the first two. He had to wait a little bit longer to get that third one, but it came in the biggest and brightest moment. And when talking about the third the third goal that was the overtime winner, he jokes saying is he was going to steal my hat trick puck as what he was thinking. I've never been on with a player on the ice where whenever he's out there, you want to give him the puck because it's probably going to come back to you in a better spot. And Quinn Hughes has just really been doing that super well throughout his entire career. We've seen how he's been probably the best defenseman in hockey. Tockett himself even said that post game where if he's not the best defenseman in hockey, I don't know who is because looking at what he can do, his speed, his agility, and all the things that he can do as well as passing, setting it up, he can score as well as set up his teammates. And that's what DeBrusque was talking about here where Hughes could easily score it just as much as he wanted to. But it's setting it up his teammates and making sure that they can get better opportunities where he's not going to try and force one. That is the measure of not only a great defenseman, but also a great selfless hockey player and a great captain. A guy that you definitely want on your team. We've touched on Quinn Hughes so much, especially in our last video where we talked about the Kale McCarm comparisons. I know a lot of debate in the comments about that. But as far as Jake DeBrusque, he had a bit of a slow start to this season with Vancouver. We weren't sure if we were going to get exactly what we invested in him. But over the past few weeks, especially the past few games, he has just been lights out. He's been scoring not only uh, multiple goals in a game, but also across multiple games where he's got a nice little point streak going. He's got a good little goal streak going as well. So he's hoping to just continue rolling with that 
and just for, form as one of the pillars of this team. We've seen where JT Miller has stepped away from the team indefinitely. Hopefully everything's okay there. But Jake DeBrusque has started to fill in that void a little bit, stepping in as that fourth member of the team where they can be one of the pillars of this team to rally behind. We got Brock Besser, we got Quinn Hughes, we got Elias Patterson, and now without JT Miller there, Jake DeBrusque is that fourth pillar and going forward probably will be with the indefinite uh, nature of JT Miller's absence. But what do you guys think down in the comments? Were you, you guys were calling me crazy when we got Jake DeBrusque and I said that he could potentially be a 40 goal scorer and people were th calling me crazy. It's looking like he could potentially be on that pace if he keeps this going. He's looking really good. He's looking like he's got a lot better chances than he got in Boston. He was on a front-loaded Boston team, came to Vancouver where we are known to just pull career seasons out of players. We did a lot of that last season where a lot of guys just were the best that they've ever been in their career. And now we are hoping to do that once again this season with Jake DeBrusque, with Kiefer Sherwood as well. Kiefer Sherwood leading the league in hits. He's got a lot of goals as well. He's one of the leaders on the Canucks for scoring as well. So Jake DeBrusque, Kiefer Sherwood, Kevin Lankinen as well, who we haven't even got to, but Kevin Lankinen made 27 saves passing the Hockey Hall of Fame goalie, Glenn Hall, who won his first nine starts on the road to start the 65-66 season with the Chicago Blackhawks and Detroit goalie Cam Dalbit, who won his first nine last season with the LA Kings. And Lankinen was very humble. He had no idea. No one else has gotten to 10 to start a season ever. He was very shocked on the record. He himself didn't even know it was a thing. And even Mark and I were texting before the game. He texted me saying, if Lankinen gets this, he will have the record. So it was really cool to see him get that. I know he didn't get as many saves as we may have would have liked to see him get. But again, we got the win. That's what matters. They don't ask how. They ask how many. All that matters is the wins and losses on the score sheet. So it was awesome to see Lankin and continue that. So we're really seeing these, these stars that we brought in that people didn't think would be stars. Kevin Lankin and He's been fantastic. Jake DeBrusque has really shown up and shown out lately and has just continued this momentum and is really looking to be one of the greatest investments we've made in the offseason. And then, of course, Kiefer Sherwood, where he is leading the league in hits. He's getting bodies out there. He's ruffling feathers. It's amazing to watch him every game where I'm laughing every shift that he's playing because I know that he's going to go out there. He's going to lay a big hit or he's going to get a shot on that. He's just going to do something to cause some disruption, cause some mayhem, and just be a wrecking ball or a bull, as a lot of people are calling him down in the comments and on social media a lot of people are calling him key for the bull hopefully that's a nickname that sticks because I really like that for him but as far as Jake DeBrus goes as well he's going to be one of those guys where we're going to have to find a nickname for him so let us know down in the comments what nicknames would you have for Jake DeBrusque as someone going forward I know Eric Branchum has now a nickname with the franchise that we'll see how that one sticks I know Quinn Hughes is there and we also have Philip Peronic on injury but Branchum has been filling in that as well but what nicknames would you guys come up with for Jake DeBrusque would love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments what do you guys think about the win in Detroit do you guys think that it's crazy that the Canucks were so great at home last season but on or in this season has not translated but the on the road has been the exact opposite it's so weird to say that when the Canucks are playing in a homestand I just can't wait for them to go back out on the road because I know that's when the W's are going to come hopefully they get off of this road trip I know after the last road trip they came home they won some games they didn't win as many as they've been winning on the road but if they can come off this road trip with a bit more momentum than they did after last road trip carry that into a nice little homestand where they can rattle off a few more wins that'll be perfect for the Canucks because then they can get that momentum that we need to head into the holidays into the new year and have this Canucks team looking like they did at the midpoint last season where they were the best team in hockey at the midpoint in the four in the 41 game stretch and they were the leading scoring team as well scoring first scoring fast and scoring many goals hopefully Vancouver can get back to those ways where we're just watching games and not having to sweat and have heart attacks and have our anxiety just skyrocket through the roof. Hopefully those wins are coming and we don't have to sweat it out any longer. But what do you guys think down in the comments? Love to hear what you guys have to say. We love your feedback. We love reading the comments after every episode. Hearing what you guys have to say, seeing your takes as if you guys were on your own show or podcast. It's awesome to see all the takes you guys have. Some of them are really good. Some of them are like ours where they can be a little crazy, a bit outlandish, but that's why we love hockey. That's why we love talking hockey. But I've been your host, Griffin. Take care.